Could I start? Okay, so this is a talk about the Perl organizations. I mean, we're in Europe, so it's more organizations. <coughs> Uh, but first, a digression. So actually, I spent more. Yeah, I must. I should probably apologize because I've put more time in other talks than this one. So I still know what I'm going to talk about, but it might be a little bit rough at some point. Anyway, I focused on the fun parts of the talk and the boring part. You you can work out. Uh, so a digression first. I think that Unicode six rules because of emoji and because Perl supports it. Speaking of Perl, it's a programming language that is powerful and fast, even though other people don't really like it. Uh, it's an open source programming language, which means it's free, as in free speech, and as in free beer. Of course, these are all Unicode 6 uh, glyphs. This talk is about the registered uh, non-profit organization that support um, the language itself, the developers of the language, and the community. So let's, let's start with, I think, the, one of the oldest ones. Uh, you may know it under another name, which is the Pearl Foundation. It was started in 2000 by Kevin Lenzo and Kurt uh, Demacht after the first YAPC in Pittsburgh. Uh, and actually, it had, so yet another society, had a, a generic name okay. um, so that it could be used as an umbrella organization for other uh, events. Um, and they started using the name Pearl Foundation in 2001, so rather quickly. They don't have memberships. They have a, a volunteers model with lots of committees and people working on them, like the um, uh, anyway the the conference committee that deals with the YAPCNA, the um, grant committee that uh, decides on the uh, grants. Um, they have so. One of the big uh, things that the foundation does is uh, collect money to support the parole. And they have provided grants to a lot of members. Uh, so, um, for example, Damien Conway was, and, and um, Dan Sugalski and Larry Wall were uh, funded in 2000, 2002 uh, to work on the, the beginnings of Pearl 6. Uh, there was also uh, fundraising to help Patrick Michaud and uh, Jonathan Worthington. And more recently, uh, Nicholas Clark, Dave Mitchell, uh, Paul Johnson, and Jess Robinson have been also uh, paid by the foundation to, to work on Pearl. Uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. So uh, lots of... Um, um, yeah, the, and the, the foundation still has uh, a lot of money that it can spend on, on Pearl itself. Um, I'm a member of two of the organizations I'm going to talk about, and I will talk better about those because I really know what's happening inside. So the other one I wanted to talk about is the Yapsi Europe Foundation. Uh, it was created in 2004, uh, but actually the first meeting was in 2003 after the YAPSI Europe in Paris. And basically it started because uh, it was difficult to talk with um, the people on the other side of the Atlantic. So to, to deal with local events in Europe, it was easier to have our own organization that could deal with euros instead of dollars and, and stuff like that. Uh, the YAPSI Europe Foundation basically do, uh, does two, three things. One of them is the venue committee that selects the next YAPSI, YAPSI Europe. 
uh, and the committee itself is made up from members of the, uh, from organizers of past YEPSIs. It also has a bank account that it kind of uh, lends to organizations. So we, we have, pay, we are paying for the uh, online payment system in a, at our bank, and that is connected to the um, uh, conference website. So when people pay the ticket, the money actually first goes to YEF, and then YEF sends it back to the organizers, paying for uh, the fees and the charges of the online payment. Uh, so it's basically a free service to the, to the community. And it's been used by 25 um, conferences in the last eight years. And since uh, 2009, we are also uh, giving money to uh, YFC Europe. So every YFC Europe is kickstarted with a 1,000 euro check. And smaller events also that could need help can ask us for, for money. Um, another, uh, and you will correct me if I say anything wrong, but I'm, I'm basically reading the email you, you, you sent okay. me. So. <laughs> Things have changed since then. Sorry? Things have changed since then. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it was created in 2008, and um, the idea was that uh, they wanted to support Perl 5 specifically because TPF was more focused on uh, Perl 6. Is that? It was at the time, yeah. It was at the time, yeah. So every of these organizations was created at a certain time for a specific set of reasons. Um, it's a bold system. Sorry? It's, it's, it's a bold. It's agile. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so, um, EPO is a membership organization. That means you, you need to pay membership. Or, yeah, there is a free membership. You still need to pay it. You still need to pay it, but I won't refund it. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can I hand you the mic? <laughs> Come on, hand me the mic. <laughs> uh, I'll read my own email again. Okay, Sh should I just read your email? Uh, yeah, so the, the EPO um, manages uh, Pro project competitions um, and initiatives. And for example, you've set up the, uh, that's your mail, don't look at me like this. <laughs> uh, for, for example, you've set up the Send a Newbie that you talked about yesterday. Um, uh, and, the, and yeah, and, and funding projects basically. Uh, the thing is, all these organizations do slightly different things and have a slightly different focus. Uh, TPF is really about Perl itself. Um, EPO is more about the community, I would say. Um, EF is more about <coughs> conferences in Europe. So there is some overlap between the, the organization, but they are all, they are all um, friendly to each other. Even complimentary, not conflicting. Yeah, complementary. Uh, so even though sometimes one organization could have been started from a difference of views, or I don't know how to say it, yeah. but yeah. Um, Volunteers who next. The underlying philosophical difference between TPF and EPO is the TPF is volunteers who are on committees and boards who decide things and get done. The EPO, the members vote on everything. And the board can't do anything because there isn't the board. There's just a board of directors who oversee the financial matters. Uh, then the next one in my list was uh, something probably... Uh, very few of us know about, that is the GPA. And I actually learned uh, today that it's not a non-profit. It is a commercial organization. So it probably has less uh, strict rules regarding money that the others have. And um, basically it started in 2008 uh, after uh, YAPSI Asia. As it turns out, a lot of, and some of the ones I'm, I'm going to talk about after, uh, a number of organizations also were created to, to um, overcome um, 
an obstacle, and, and the obstacle was money. Uh, because it's very difficult to deal with money uh, on an individual level. So it's better to have a... First of all, if you don't exist, I mean, you need a bank account, so you need some way to exist legally. And no one is willing to uh, do a conference on their own bank account, I think. <laughs> well, except Andrew Shitov, but... <laughs> uh, so again, uh, the... So they created it to handle stuff that individuals uh, couldn't handle, and that means uh, talking with corporations, um, uh, handle the finances, and so on. And Daisuke told me that it, it was a very good idea because now that they are an entity, an incorporated entity, they have more freedom with their finance, and they can do contracts and things like that. Uh, they can have profits, and as I said, there is no one individual that will um, be responsible for the taxes and uh, the possible penalties. And it's also easier for them because they are not, um, I mean, really, a, they are a commercial thing. They can contract work. So they can um, get, pay, pay someone to do their site design uh, and, and that kind of stuff. Um, so as many of the other organizations, their goal is basically to promote uh, Pearl and educate people about it. Um, sorry. <laughs> uh, and yes, there, there is uh, also uh, something that happened in, the, in, in Japan that required uh, a lot of effort from TPF, which is another company trademarked the, the, the name Pearl. Uh, and that caused a lot of trouble, and I think it took maybe two years for TPF and GPA to resolve the issue. And now Perl is, as the programming language, is really the trademark of the Perl Foundation. Um, and so I've been talking about uh, conferences and how they um, kind of force people to get organized. And that's exactly what happened uh, with the French. Uh, when we wanted to do the, um, and we were a committee of a lot of people, <laughs> uh, after YAPSI in uh, Amsterdam, um, we were very excited and wanted to do our own. So uh, there was a meeting with the previous organizers. I, I mean, that's also where the idea of a venue committee comes from. It's, it happened like that since the beginning. So we had a dinner with a... Uh, Kevin Lenzo and the organizers of London and of the Amsterdam conferences and the people from Munich and Paris were both willing to do a conference. So the end of the meeting was, okay, the first one who gets a good proposal gets it. And then we realized we need to have uh, an organization to handle the money. So we set it that up again with the same goals of promoting Pearl that time in France. Um, and that, that, um, so that, that worked for uh, the conference itself. Actually, the Pearlmongers in France have existed since 1999, and someone came to the meetings and said, why don't we have a non-profit org? And we were all like, we don't need a non-profit to, to drink beer. So it only, it's only out of um, necessity that we ended up making a, um, an organization. Uh, and one of the first things we did was also to uh, send money to TPF for the um, uh, Pearl 6 fund in, in the early 2001 and 2. And after YEPSI, we were so happy with having done a conference that we wanted to do it again, so we did the French Pearl Workshop ever since. And that's about it. I mean, the, we have some money and we use it to basically make free conferences. Uh, we've set up the OSDC.fr, uh, which is the open source developers conference, the, the French version, and it's a joint effort with the Python and the Ruby communities. And we now host, 
there, there are new members to the OSDCFR. Uh, um, PHP, small talk. So it's, it's basically dynamic languages in, in France. And it became a different organization uh, whose members are organizations. It's, it's a bit <laughs> weird. <coughs> so we have two, two people from each organization in the, in the OSDC organization. Um, and I wanted to talk about other um, Perl Monger groups, but I didn't find the logos, or they, didn't, they don't have one. For example, Vienna.pm, who did Yapsi in Vienna. And uh, again, uh, the, um, the organization was set up to uh, create, to do the Australian Pearl Workshops, the YAPSI. Uh, they did the QA Hackathon in 2010 in, in Vienna. And because their YAPSI was so successful, and uh, successful financially too, they, they had a lot of money that then they could use to um, fund, uh, I think it was Jonathan Worthington, and uh, other groups. They send money to YEF, for example. Uh, so all these, all these organizations, again, are um, cooperating. There, there is no competition between the organizations. Um, some of them are local, like, like the Pearl Mongers, uh, the local Pearl Mongers. Uh, some of them are global, like TPF, EPO. Uh, another organization that was created back in 1998 was actually Pearl Mongers, uh, which was set up to provide um, uh, email and web services to the local groups. And after a while, it got just merged into TPF. Uh, so we see merging of the organizations when the specific reason for one of them to exist kind of goes away. Um, and yeah, I don't think I have a conclusion, actually. Uh, <laughs> it's, we're all volunteers, and um, it's really hard. I mean, my experience with, with volunteer organizations is that it's really hard to get people to, it's really easy to get people interested, but you need to get them committed. And, and that's uh, more difficult. And, yeah, the, the, I think one of the tricks is really to uh, lower the, the barrier to entry. So if people can help, they should be able to help you quickly and, and without any um, roadblocks. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's no, if you have something to do and none of the other organizations is able to do it, maybe you need to, to make your own. And then maybe later you merge back or but I don't think an organization is a requirement to do something. It's really only needed for, um, how do you say that? Um, the, the external um, show, I mean, you need a, representation. yeah, representation, and if you need to handle money, otherwise, People can just do things. So, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I'm done. So, no time for questions.